Hi, I'm Dr. Lindner. This is an Anatomy and Physiology 1, the review for your final exam. This is good for my Adelphi University students and Nassau Community College students, but not for the University of Bridgeport. Okay? This is a 100-question final, all on neurology. I'm going to try and keep it under 10 minutes. If not, I'll have this on YouTube as two segments. It'll be listed under Anatomy and Physiology 1 final. Make sure you review the difference between the somatic and the autonomic neural system. You should know the difference, the two different branches of the ANS, the autonomic neural system, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Make sure you know the difference between the CNS and the PNS. Um, uh, make sure you know the thoracolumbar outflow and the craniosacral outflow, the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. I would know what speeds up digestion, which one slows down digestion. I'd know the difference between an action potential and a graded potential. Review the different types of channels, leakage channels, gated channels, and ligand channels. In terms of a neuron cell membrane, I'd know uh, if it's more permeable to sodium or potassium. Make sure you know the RMP, the resting membrane potential. In terms of the cell membrane, I'd know extracellularly and intracellularly. I would know if there's more sodium extracellularly or intracellularly, and if there's more potassium inside or outside of the cell, and which way it moves following the concentration gradient. I would know depolarization, repolarization, and hyperpolarization. If the, cell, if the cell membrane potential, if the resting membrane potential is becoming more positive or, or more negative, I would know what the threshold is. Remember that RMP is minus 70, then it moves up to threshold, which is minus 55, then all the sodium gates open, goes up to positive 30, sodium gates close, potassium gates open, we start to repolarize to resting membrane potential of minus 70. The potassium gates uh, close slower, so you hyperpolarize below minus 70. So just review that. <clears throat> uh, you need to know those phases and uh, put them in order, uh, starting from a resting membrane potential. So there'll be a matching section of uh, four or five choices and you have to put them in order starting from resting membrane potential to hyperpolarization. Know what gates are open and what gates are closed. Know the difference between continuous conduction and saltatory conduction and know the difference between spatial summation and temporal summation. Know the A, B, and C fibers, the difference in size of those fibers and whether they're myelinated or not. I'd know the difference between an EPSP and IPSP, excitatory postsynaptic potential and inhibitory postsynaptic potential. I'd know how neurotransmitters are removed from the, the synaptic cleft. I'd know the neurotransmitters. I'd know acetylcholine, GABA, glutamine, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, epinephrine. I'd know about Parkinson's disease. I'd know about substance P. I'd know about neuroplasticity and where repair of the neural system can take place, CNS or PNS. I'd know about the neurolemma and its significance in uh, neuroregeneration. Make sure you go on YouTube and you Google uh, Montel Williams Chiropractic. Google that. It's probably a three or four minute video. Review MS. There'll be a matching, matching section on the meninges, so you should know dura mater, arachnoid, subarachnoid space, and pia mater, and denticulate ligament. Some of the basic anatomy of the spinal cord, the dorsal and ventral roots, know about the corda equina, phylum terminale, conus medullaris, the difference between the dorsal roots and the ventral roots, I would also know in terms of the spinal cord, uh, is the inside of the spinal cord myelinated or unmyelinated, and what is the outside. 
I would know the sensory and motor track. So if I give you a multiple choice and say all the following are sensory tracks except for which one, or all the following are motor tracks except for which one, you can identify. We know that sensory tracks ascend, motor tracks descend. Make sure you go over uh, Spartame and uh, diet soda and that conversion from phenylalanine to tyrosine to dopamine to norepinephrine and epinephrine. We know what happens between phenylalanine to tyrosine with that uh, diet soda, diet Snapple, diet iced tea, etc. I know the tracks that deal with pain and temperature. I know what the posterior columns do, what the corticospinal tracts do. The posterior columns know the difference between fasciculus cuneatus and fasciculus gracilis. I know about the somatic reflexes. Know the components of a reflex arc, the five components, be able to put them in order. You should know the Golgi tendon organ reflex, stretch reflex, flexor reflex, Babinski reflex, and crossed extensor reflex. There'll be a matching on that. Make sure you know epineurium, endoneurium, and perineurium. You should know all of the plexi, cervical, brachial, lumbar, and sacral plexus. You should know their levels. You should know the nerves that are associated with each of them. Make sure you go over the phrenic nerve. I would know what the radial nerve innervates, the median nerve innervates, the axillary nerve. If there's damage to the radial nerve, ulnar nerve, or median nerve, the clinical conditions associated with that. Remember Dr. Kuma, go over D-R-C-U-M-A, Dr. Kuma. Drop hand is radial nerve damage, claw hand is ulnar nerve damage, and if the median nerve gets damaged, that's APAM. That's the mnemonic, Dr. Kuma. Go over sciatica, all the different causes of sciatica. I'd know where the sciatic nerve comes off of, what plexus, and the nerves that make up the sciatic nerve. Um, Moralgia parasthetica. Make sure you go over all of the cranial nerves. Go over the uh, cranial nerve 5, the sensory component. We know that there's a dermatome with that, and the motor component. Know the dermatomes. I'll ask a dermatome question of either the upper or lower extremity. So we'll go over C5, 6, 7, C8, and T1, L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and S1 of the lower extremity, as we did in class. Go over shingles or herpes zoster, circle of Willis, the blood supply of the brain. The flow of cerebral spinal fluid, the flow through the ventricles and the foramen of Monroe and cerebral aqueduct of Sylvis, the choroid plexus, the ependymal cells. I know about the medulla oblongata, all the cranial nerves that originate there, the importance of the vagus nerve. I know in the midbrain the red, black, and twins in back. Go over the substantia nigra, the red nucleus, and the corpora quadrigemina, the superior and inferior colliculi and their functions. The functions of the cerebellum. The difference between thalamus and hypothalamus. Don't confuse pituitary gland with pineal gland. I know there are differences. The difference between the basal ganglia and the limbic system. The difference between the precentral gyrus and postcentral gyrus. What is Broca's area and Wernick's area? What is aphasia? What's the difference between the left and right hemispheres of the brain and function? What is an EEG? You should know the different waves associated with it. Different types of strokes. The TIA, what a TIA is. Ischemic versus hemorrhagic stroke. And there will be 10 questions on the cranial nerves. You should know them by their uh, Roman numeral and by their name, and you should know their functions. So there's 100 questions, they're multiple guess, matching and true and false. Straightforward. But do your studying and do your work, and you should do just fine, okay? It was a pleasure having you in class. If you need to reach me, Dr. Stephen Lindner at AOL.com. Bye now.